Um, and I think it's, it's, it's extraordinarily, and we're, since we're a nonprofit, we don't rely on selling art. It's something that, you know, we look to do constantly because, you know, obviously that helps the artists and, um, you know, we are trying to engage with the general public in that way, but um, we don't rely on that income to survive. And that, so that's how we are able to function. But for a lot of commercial galleries, um, like Tiny Park Gallery, uh, which was a great contemporary commercial gallery that was in town, they got priced out um, of their space recently, last year, I believe. Um, and it happens all the time. Um, and Art Palace, which was a really big commercial gallery that was here, one of the best, uh, moved to Houston because they couldn't sell art here. And their livelihood did depend on selling artwork because um, they did have to, you know, pay to be over, in, you know, where the rent keeps increasing. And I don't know if you want to speak to that as well. But. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit on the main points. And it's, we have a similar model where our, our studio activities kind of subsidize our gallery space as well as support from funding allow us to not have uh, sale-dependent gallery spaces. And I think a little bit probably with your model, but, all, but really with our model and our mission is that we want to celebrate that. And it is a little, it's, it's interesting when you talk about the creative sector and um, we talk about the economic impact of the creative sector and how amazing it is, because it does do a lot of great stuff for the economy here. But I also want to figure out, or I think there's a lot of people in the arts scene who want to figure out how to make art for art's sake and support that. And that's certainly what we're doing in, the, in our gallery spaces, is trying to celebrate art that just is art and can sell, but doesn't have to sell. It's not, it's not required for its, the, the act of its creation is not intended to sell the piece and move forward. Um, so that's just a very different model. And the, the, I think the, the commercial spaces in general aren't sustainable because, alluding back to what I said earlier, it's, there's nothing out there, it's out there to support it. Um, and on the other side of the, the studio spaces, we're also suffering, like Art Post would be one of the, it's Canopy and uh, Pump and Art Post are the three big studio complexes on the east side. And Art Post just, the owner who's a great person, um, mm -hmm. I think you better Rebecca and my landlord, of all wonderful people who support the arts, he decided to sell his property. And the new owner just doubled the rates because she could. Um, and so now it's basically they're all spreading out and trading by these means. Got like 20 studio applications in yeah. one night. <laughs> um, so that's just the unfortunate reality of studios and the commercial galleries is that that support system is teetering and at any moment it could just collapse and all of a sudden you have people moving to Houston to have a gallery there or searching around Austin to find a studio space. So what would happen if Artists set up refugee camps <laughs> at the lawn of the Mac here. I mean, sorry, what was that? Our well paid police department to make yeah. sure that. <laughs> yeah, right, go look at
that needs to happen. And perhaps we need to really foster that model of a nonprofit um, following the Trump project model, following the big media model. Maybe we do have more of those. I don't know. I guess I'm saying 19 days all at the same time. <laughs> Uh, what is it, artist district? Because we don't have an artist district. district. Yeah. I mean, it seems yeah. to me that that's what, maybe that's what we're all yeah. calling for. And I, I would say some of that's so, um, possibly being addressed through Think East, mm -hmm. um, the d development on the east side. I mean, do you, can you speak yeah. to that a little more? Or, or did you have? Well, okay. well, we are applying with the state for a Red River Cultural District. That, and that's mainly about the music, but it is mm. a possibility that you could have some day space for um, arts there. Uh, but I wanted to point out with regard to arts advocacy that um, I'm on the board for the Austin Creative Alliance and I'd like to invite everybody to a summit meeting that we're holding next Tuesday at 3 p.m. at the KL KLRU Studios. Uh, you might have gotten an invite on Facebook, but um, it's another, there's a whole chain of these events where we're talking about the problems and possible solutions. Uh, one of my colleagues said it's an endless uh, series of meetings, but we're having another one next week at 3 p.m. at the KLRU studios. Very good. Thank one you. One thing that's interesting, I've recently joined the board as well, and um, we, uh, in this conversation about the creative sector and the economic impact of the creative sector and all these things, um, it's a huge sector. You're talking about uh, architects, designers, uh, gaming, music, film. It's it's a huge swath of people who create and make stuff. Um, is it effective or beneficial for us to speak about that when you when we're talking a little bit more specifically about the arts or visual arts or whatever the arts art you're talking about? I think it is. I think it's it beneficial. Pro it probably depends on who you're speaking to. I'm on this first thing. I don't know much about the Austin art scene other than I, I go when I can to enjoy things and I purchase art when I can afford to. But I'm a sociologist, a professor of sociology at ACC, and I, I've written some about art and culture. Um, and, and so that's why I came today. But as you all keep talking about this, I keep thinking about Highland Mall. Um, ACC purchased Highland Mall and is moving their art program there, and it's a huge space. Um, and they don't have plans for all of it yet, but they're planning to put apart. I mean, the whole thing has been covered on NPRs about how progressive this college is going to be because it's going to be mixed with, you know, housing and classrooms and labs. And again, the Rio Grande Art School is, you know, the art classes on Rio Grande are supposed to be moved out there. So I'm just wondering if anyone's talked to ACC or any of the other educational, because when you're talking about a wide variety, I mean, a college campus is a great place where you've got all of that going on. Film students, we have gaming students going all over the place, and, you know. So I was I was just wondering if any of those been approached, been approached or if that had even been thought of. Jean Claire has a, yeah. Well, I just wanted to, first of all, say that, um, you know, as, as everyone talks about trying to activate and trying to to coordinate and trying to um, go forward and address City Hall. Um, I, I, I do think it's, it's terrific that everybody here is in this room and these, these panels, but what I see a lot of is just a lot of genre tribalism around in, in the Austin arts community. All these people are very concerned with visual arts and nobody really from the theater community being, being, that, that's being involved in it. Everybody gets, but the theater community has its own concerns. They've actually been in East Austin a lot longer than big medium and a lot of other places are. Um, you all have the same concerns, and there are organizations like Creative Alliance and things like that where people do mix, that, that as you begin to have these more of these discussions and move forward, don't forget that, that there's many other people who, just because they're making a different genre of art than you are, are also in the same thing. And I just would love to see more of the creative community in this town actually working as a community together and not so isolated just by I'm worried about my gallery space here, or I'm worried about my theater here, and everybody's talking about the same thing and seems to think they're unique and alone, and they're not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, that's, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's just to 
break down some of that isolation. And you can do that through organizations like Creative Alliance that are already sort of in place, but to kind of bring the discussions back to, together. That's yeah. Because I mean, you, you do have a huge community. And I, you know, I do think that things like um, designers and architects um, um, can also be a part of that discussion too, a lot of other creative industries. Sure. In general, it, it, real quick, in oh, general, yeah. it, um, I totally agree. And at the first Creative Summit, we sat down with a huge group of um, there was theater, dance, mm -hmm. designers, gamers, architects, maybe not architects, but it was a, a broad spectrum. And we came up with these three major points, and it's the usual. It's affordability, uh, space to create your stuff, and space to show your stuff. Um, it goes a little bit deeper. I can't quite mm -hmm. recall, but it's in that realm. To piggyback off what Jean Claire said, uh, I think that often, you know, we have kind of the east and the west side um, and of art, if you will, and I think uh, if we can all start collaborating together, um, maybe so a lot of people think the west side, but all the east side, all the east side, east side is art for art's sake. Um, but I don't think that it's enough. Or my hope would be, eventually, those things wouldn't be mutually exclusive. Um, and I think the more discussions, you know, that I really encourage lots more children and make um, inviting gallery owners that maybe think that are commercial galleries or whatever, but into the discussion, um, because those are, you know, the ones who are choosing artists and, um, you know, making the money right now. Uh, and I think the more we can have that east-west talk, I think that's more just a theater creative community in general. Um, you know, that includes the, the actors and the musicians and everything, and have a, um, you know, more voices, louder voices, more of a force. Um, but I just really, you know, I, I'm here because I met Anthony at a party, and he told me about it, and I was like, I, w I really want to go see that. But I don't know if I would have known as the West Side Gallery, I don't think I would have known, to, you know, to come. Um, and I think the the more, there are public galleries here in town, not as many as we'd like, but that have been here a really, really long time. Um, and those leaders, you know, Judy Taylor from Gallery Hill Creek, uh, Bill Davis from Davis Gallery, and Wally from Wally Workman, they've been in here about 30 years, <laughs> you know, selling posters in 19, the 1980s to get by to what they're doing today. And I think that they uh, should all be um, included in the MDF conversation yet further and listen to what they have to say and also how they can help. Because um, uh, they, you know, hopefully, we do have the collectors that can put dollars behind some things. So, I think what Jean Claire said is great and um, keep that in mind with the areas of town, if you will. Yeah, and I think that extrapolates like to what Robert was saying before about how, I mean, that's the problem. The problem, problem in general, I think, is connecting the art community with the general public, whether that's the theater crowd or you know, the west side and the east side. I mean, I'm all about, you know, like yeah, all about making that connection. I think the East Austin Studio Tour has really contributed to that in a big way, and you know, Art Alliance, which has done a really good job. It's all about connecting that, bridging that gap, right? Um, but I think with a, like considering. It's only relevant in so many ways, right? Like you can only commiserate on certain issues with like, you know, dancers who are looking for a space or an artist on, like when we look at studio applications, we get 200 applications a year-ish for studios. And like if I see an artist who's a commercial artist or like uh, somebody who obviously doesn't, who doesn't, who can afford a better space, or um, it's an artist who is really struggling, I'm going to pick the artist who's really struggling. You know what I mean? So like we, we go through that issue all the time with like designers or people who make money. Like they aren't going through the same sort of issues. So we're trying to foster the people who are really needing that, if that makes sense, in terms of like looking at other kinds of artists or but yeah, I think I think addressing the issue of just like connecting everyone is is the basis of pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it is that larger connection, that general audience connection. Yeah. I remember looking with um, the contemporaries who was doing an exhibition at Grey Dog. And Grey Dog saw the East Side um, because of Chavez. And Andrea Millard told him not throwing her under the bus, but she had a group come in 
who usually works with the contemporary or goes to the contemporary to see stuff. Mm -hmm. She had them over at Grey Duck saying that they had never been east of 35, ever. Like, they just wouldn't go east of 35. That that wasn't a thing they did. Right. And, and that they were thankful because they thought it was just graffiti. <laughs> and we and we did the same thing, yeah. and the same Pump Project hosted the Contemporary yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Young yeah. Artist Exhibition mm -hmm. that Michael Parches did, and, and we got so many people who, um, who had never, who didn't even know that we had existed, um, and yeah, had never been on the east side, had never, and it's like the most awesome thing ever, and we experienced that during the East Austin Studio Tour, and I'm on the board for the Austin Museum Partnership, and on Austin Museum Day, when people come, they, you know, it's really rad to see people interact with art for the first time and be super engaged with it, but just not know, they don't know that it's going on. It's like, I don't know how you address that except for with these, you know, bigger organizations and events. But legitimately, it's, I think it's definitely an education thing. Like on these sort of occasions, I, I've literally watched a girl walk into the gallery and look at her boyfriend and be like, what do we do? We do? how do we do this? And he's like, you walk around and you look at the art. There's a hesitance, there's a real hesitancy there. People yeah. are afraid and I think, you know, it's like, oh, you know, well, I don't know anything about visual art. People are afraid to like engage with it. Um, yeah, so I think it's like connecting with people and educating and I think the way that the contemporary is doing these offsite exhibitions is a really good way to do that as well. And how are you all um, marketing yourselves? Because I think some of it could potentially be, you know, we have Formula One too, where the, it's become international as well. We're having these international wealthy people coming in. And so I think maybe one of the things that we all should think about is how to really market ourselves as a, not just as a music city, but as an art city, you know, an artistic city. Um, so I don't know, you know, how you all, but maybe it should become more of a group effort than an individual effort. Um, yeah, sure. that's one of the things that, you know, Laura Espasto is here, she's our division manager. And that's one of the things that, you know, we struggle with too because uh, we don't have a huge budget for it, but we have to be very creative with it. And we have to really study our market. Who, who's our audience? Now it's a bigger audience. You know, it's a larger, more international audience. And talk about education, it's, but you know, a lot of people I think, like all of us, we think visually too. And so we have to attract them somehow um, visually and get them, pull them in and, and get them to go to these places and get them to purchase. And, and why do we want them to purchase? What is the value in the art? You know, why do we want them to buy your work? We, we have to, it's, it is about education but we have to explain to them um, why you know, a certain work is, is, is very valuable. Um, I think that it's really important to really market ourselves at this point. I mean, we're only moving forward. We can't, we can't go backwards. We can only just, you know, and we have to really think about all our social media efforts. Bye, Theo. I have to go. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, I think there's a, lo there's, there's a lot of work to be done, too. But we need to be smart, because if, if mm -hmm. you're talking about the international and you know, stuff like that, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which Shay was mm -hmm. mentioning. It's right. It's like we want to more people to we want to, we do. but we want to be smart about it, exactly. so it doesn't turn into what we think is happening, gentrification, or these mm -hmm. bad money. <laughs> the, 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 driving, the driving force behind it is profit. That's what I think we have to be mindful of. Is that we have to be conscious of what, of how that market works. Like, yes, we need to market, we need to sell ourselves, we need to promote ourselves, but we need to be smart about it, be strategic about it. But that's because why I think we need to do it together as a group. Mm -hmm. I think there's more, um, you know, there's something more about that than just trying to do it on your own. Because, well, I'm thinking, weirdly, if I'm thinking about what you were talking about, ATC and Highland Mall, and what Catalina was saying about um, finding art spaces, but also with 20,000 people coming to our, our city every day, making it bigger and bigger, it makes me think of Houston. Year. Every year. Yeah, every year. <laughs> That'd be a lot. Um, <laughs> Houston, where they had an empty mall, and they just said, 
here you go, artists, do what you want with your drum pedals. Mm -hmm. Like two years ago, they gave them a mall. But it wasn't in like the arts district, or I forget where it was, like in Northeast Houston or something. It was out on the outskirts, yeah. And so they just had a mall to do what they wanted. But that was because of the density of Houston. It's like the fourth largest city in the country, and they have a waste of space. <laughs> where I don't know if we have that, or if we want that. We don't want to have a mall out in Dugerville that we all all of a sudden start having shows. Well, well, I was going to say, like, with this marketing to, like, the international crowd, like, we're going to be competing against entertainment. And if we were given a, a mall and it's open to anybody, and someone with an entertainment idea, whether it's a music performance or, you know, just something bigger that they can, they can easily monetize on, like, charge 10 bucks, 20 bucks a head to come in and do whatever they're going to do versus art. Like, that's not the first thing that comes to arts organizations is charging 20 bucks a head. It's like, we got to have good art in here. That's the first thought. And like, so it's, you know, that's a big challenge, the way that we, we as art organizations think versus entertainment or, you know, more commercial yeah. consideration. Well, so don't get me wrong, maybe I wasn't being clear. If you've seen the, the parts that have been altered by ACC, it doesn't look like a mall anymore. No. Um, the no, but it was, it was has opened. Large, put a lot of public money. Into it. Yeah, but I mean, but I'm, but I'm saying they're renovating the entire place, and, and, and it will look more like a campus. I think when it's done, yeah, as well as adding mixed things. I didn't think it was everything. I just thought this reaching the general population hub. It's right there on 35 between the east side and the west side, right off the U and T campus. Uh, it could be a little closer to the river, but nevertheless, it's, it is a centralized sort of uh, Austin area, and it seemed like some of the things, because for it to be sold to something like ACC, there would have to be mutual benefits, and I could think of various mutual benefits uh, to the college. Artists in residence there from different areas uh, would not only help the students, but help the artists. They could also take on continuing education courses, which would promote the idea of the city of the arts as well. I mean, there's a, a variety of things in which maybe they make a little money teaching painting or theater or something. We, we already do that with teaching classes at the state theater or, or, or sending students down there. Again, it's, and I don't know that they'd be open. It just seemed like right now, when all that space hasn't been spoken for, when they're still renovating you know, major department stores down there, be a good time to think about it. Well, I mean, I think there's a good reason why it's not being, and those spaces are not being spoken for. Um, I know for a fact that there was an artist trying to engage with them before the renovation, and, and they weren't interested because their thoughts were on, we need to build the space. We need to, you know, we need to make sure our ducks are in a row so that this is our campus. So they're not really thinking, I mean, I'm assuming well, also, that they're not. Also, I think all that space is actually spoken for by ACC. Creative Alliance, Alliance and Austin Shakespeare, which was offering an empty space at Highland Mall, was just kicked out actually by ACC. I um, wasn't saying out. it wasn't. I yeah, understand it's the collaboration with there. ACC, yeah. and it may be how they're approached. If they're approached as this is a citywide artistic thing versus a single artist or a single group, some sort of collaborative hub that would bring them attention as well right. politically. Well, here's my, where my cynicism comes in, is that we're talking about bureaucracy of ACC, and then we're going to talk about bureaucracies of, of a conglomeration of arts organizations. Bureaucracy and bureaucracy, that means more time. It's not going to happen. Oh, well, that's without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anybody know anything about art, another art space, which is the nonprofit they do a lot of separate projects around the country? Um, I was on their website, um, but whether they might have done a study in Austin, or that they were asked to come do a study. Um, and I don't know what came of that study, if they're going to do a project here, I don't know if anybody's heard anything. No. Um, does anybody know anything? Because I think that what, you know, we're talking about is what they are hopefully going to try to do, and I don't know what the scale is going to be or any information on it, but um, I think that would be a really good thing for all of us to try to clue into and maybe have... As a funder, I think that there are two projects. Oh, that's Art Place. Art I think she's talking about Art, art Space, space the, okay. or the artist housing. But they were working or. with the Austin Theater um, project. Yeah, okay. Oh, art Space? Yeah. Yeah. Austin. <coughs> Which is now an ACC. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they've done different projects where they, they take over like an advanced, like old school or whatever, and, or build a pool building or whatever, but it's a perfect to the community because it's 
study on what they think is appropriate. They, yeah, they, they're, they're a national organization that started in Minnesota, and they develop artist housing, and specifically have had, had live, work, or specific artist studio spaces. Um, and yet there was a study that was done in Austin, and I know the city is in conversations of how that could actually land, um, but it's only a draw. It's just, you know, and, and you, have to, you, you have to have many, many drops to fill a bucket, but um, it's, Yeah, it's, I mean, most of the projects that aren't that big, and so it gets right. a big drop, but <coughs> if somebody, you know, you see that happening in front of you, then maybe mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. people have ideas. Yeah. Um, wait, wait a comment over here. Wait. I had a question. Um, as one of the 20,000 people who just arrived, um, we, don't, we don't know what's going on. And uh, we want, you know, for when we think, oh, what should we do with this weekend? It's like, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I, if I, I actually came here by accident. <laughs> so if I had known there were shows going on, I knew these galleries were there, I would have happily gone and brought all my friends. So my question is, what's the marketing Strategy right now. Like how are you guys well, you can just pick up an Austin Chronicle in the uh, listing. Most of the people my age who come here, you're on the internet. And they, they have an internet site too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they'll, unfortunately, they're always on Facebook or whatever. And I know, they're allowed on Facebook. And, my, and like, so they don't know what to do. So they're looking at the feed, like, oh, there's a party here, there's a show here. And that's like the first thing they go to. And it's obviously a lot easier said than done, but my question is just trying to make sure you have a really strong presence in those areas, because there are people, there's, like you said, 20,000 people a year who, who want to come and support you, but we just don't, we didn't know. And, and Austin does have an arts website that is funded by the city of Austin. Uh, there was an arts plan called Create Austin a couple of years ago. Um, that designated that there should be a sort of central advocacy organization, which is what Austin Creative Alliance was, what Austin Creative Alliance is evolved into being. It used to be just for theater advocacy, and then it became an advocacy for all creative sectors. So they have um, purchased a license through um, uh, with a, a web. Uh, uh, which is a really a, a great um, tool. It's a good piece of software, is what I think. Uh, and it's called Now Playing Austin. Um, and it pretty much has like all the theater dates, all the gallery dates, and resources for artists. While it's funded by the city of Austin, it's um, implemented by a nonprofit. And I don't, Austin Creative Alliance, yeah. right? The website mm -hmm. is funded by the Austin, but they, but they do it. But they're really inadequately funded to really push it out mm -hmm. and market the hell out of this website, because yeah. that's what they really, really need is the money to market the website. The website's been built, it's been there, it has a lot of tools, and it's a good piece of software. It's just they're not being properly yeah, and every, every, every media outlet, newspapers like where I work for, television stations, has a website that are loaded with events and calendars. So I would suggest, you know, looking through Google or something like I, that I, to find the, the media sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I wanted to, to clarify. What I meant was that um, it's not a people's forefront. They're not... Are you saying you need to make people aware that they want to do these yeah, things? Yeah. Oh, yeah, local artists, go support them. And that's a huge problem. And mm -hmm. so what I'm saying is that making it part of... Yeah, how do we make it a part of that? Yeah, well, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's a challenge. I mean, yeah. even before those couple people just left. I mean, there's still not enough people of us, not enough people in this room to do all the things that are happening this weekend. There's just always so many things happening in Austin. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the challenge is... You know, we're getting noise from music. We're getting noise from you know all you know all these other all these different things happening. Even if we make noise, we're just adding to the noise. Yeah. And so, how do we cut through? You know, and like what? Mm -hmm. So brainstorming ways. And as yeah. Mike said, unfortunately, most people are just on social media wasting their time. But I just wanted to bring that perspective. Thank you. Thank you.
you, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, think I think we're about to wrap it up. Um, I wanted any... to ask if the artists present, we have four, yes. if we want to meet up in the gallery, just, real, just if you want to talk about your work. Because I, I had planned on talking about the work here a little bit, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm, you know, if anyone's interested, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can go up there, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because we, we actually have five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. We've got Thank five you. artists. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, yeah, well, I guess we'll just kind of end it right there. And if you guys want to come up with us to the gallery to see the show that kind of sparked this conversation, um, we want to send our. Amazing thank yous to Erlinda and everyone here at the MAC for uh, giving this conversation a home, uh, for feeding us and having drinks. Please take stuff with you. There's a lot of stuff over there. Um, thank you to our artists who were able to be here. We have Claudia Paricio, Chavez Zapata, Catalina Hernandez, um, Roberts. Candace, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> Candace Briseño, Deborah Roberts, um, to our speakers here, um, to the audience, uh, great contributions to the conversation as well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll just take this upstairs. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>